Okay, we're at choosing video cards based on application 8.5, but before we get going, let's do a review of the quiz. So this is the quiz that was just taken in 8.4. We're gonna go over the questions to make sure everybody understands. Video card has how many digital outputs? Ah, pretty easy. One, two, three, four, five. If you put in five and hit check, it should have said correct, and you got full points for that one. Okay, next page. Match the terms and or statements. CUDA cores and stream processors can blank be compared. Let's see, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Definitely or never, definitely or never, never. They can't be compared because CUDA cores and stream processors basically mean the same kind of thing, but there could be two to 16 stream processors in one CUDA core. So if I looked at the number, they don't make any sense because string processor, the number of processors in CUDA cores is some multiple division number of the number of processors. So it doesn't make any sense. So you can't compare those straight line numbers. NVIDIA is a term that from CUDA core and stream processors is when we talk about AMD because CUDA cores is an AMD uh, term. This video card has how many analog outputs? Let me see, that's analog, that's digital, that's, let's see, that's a, a VGA, and that is a HDMI, and this is a DVI-I, which means it could do analog or digital. Gosh, what's the answer? I'm gonna say, so it's one because this is an analog, this is a digital that can be converted to analog, it's not truly an analog output, so it's, might be confusing there if you guessed two because this one can be converted with an adapter to an analog that was incorrect the correct answer is one analog because there's two digital on that one let's see video cards come in a variety of class sizes and speeds a serious camera would most likely want okay so uh, i've got both a memory amount and an api so the api we know ultimate is the current one 12x ultimate is the current one so that one doesn't make sense that one definitely doesn't make sense and at least two gig or says at least six gigabits that's not a byte this is a byte six gigabytes of ram that'd be the right answer on that one you wouldn't want to uh, bite off on six gigabits remember big b is bytes little b is bits next question uh, what is the reference to this video card? What is the correct answer? And it says, note, you must reference pass mark. So I can't answer the question without knowing because I'm gonna open up this one and I'm gonna say, what kind of video card is it? It's a 3060 Ti video card from some manufacturer I've never heard of, MLLSE. But anyways, it's $399 on Newegg for this 3060 TI. So I would need to go to Passmark in order to look at it. So let's go over to Passmark and find, I can use Control X and find the 3060. There's the 3060 TI. So its Passmark rating is 20,643. Now I'm asking you to look at the chart. The announcements are annoying me. Anyway, so I'm asking you to look at that and look up and down. By the way, I didn't point this out last class and I should have. If you hit this down arrow, it gives you a little information about it. It says what rank number it is, what the mark is on it, and it tells you right down here what the power rating is. So I know this one used 200 watts. This one uses 250. It's just a little on this drop down one that's easier to look at right there. I forgot to point that out. Anyways, back to the question. So the question asked, what is correct? It is better than the 6800. Let's look at, let's look for the 6800 on there. So where's the 6800? Now this one is a 20,643. It's number, I, I'm just gonna remember that. It's number 25. So is it better than the 6800? Oh, I lost my control find there. The 6800 is which 6800 the w or the xt let's see what was the question again uh it is better than the 6800 rx 6800 is right there it's not better than that this one's ranked number 21 so it's that's not the right answer so let's see it is better than the 2080 ti let's look for the 2080 ti is it better than the 2080 oop i forgot the zero in there 2080 TI. There's the 2080 TI. Is it better than that one that's ranks 22nd? No, actually the 2080 TI 
is better than the 3060 Ti. That's crazy. If you went straight by numbers, you'd never get that one right. The GeForce RTX 2080 Super is rated as a better car. The 2080 Super. Where's the 2080 Super? It's down here. It's not better. It's worse. That's rank number 35. That means this last one should be right. The Radeon RX 6900 XT is rated as a better card. Let's find that 6900 XT. XT. 6900 XT is ranked number 11. That's our answer. That one is rated as a better card. Check. There's no way to answer that question without using Passmark. Okay, next question. Video cards have two main manufacturers. Who are they? Oh, they're NVIDIA and AMD. I don't need to look that up because we've gone over that a million times. Yes, correct. And the last question, graphics cards directly affected speed. Match these turn with specifications below. GPU clock speeds are in hmm, gigahertz, gigahertz. Memory bandwidth is in what? Memory bandwidth is in bits. How many bit? Why does it amount of available memory is in gigabytes and the size of the memory? Oh, size of the memory bus. Oh, bandwidth is gigabits per second. Oh, I got that wrong. There we go. And the bus itself is in bits. Ooh, I would have been bad if I got that wrong. There we go. There's all the correct answers for the quiz. Now we can move on into the section itself on deciding a video card. And we're going to start out with a short video from Linus Text Tips. Take it away, Linus. One of the most common questions we get around here, especially when a new graphics card launches is, hey, Linus, or hey, Keys. Oh, you shouldn't ask him, though. Actually, actually, he helped write this script, so maybe, maybe he knows more than you guys think. How much graphics memory do I need? Well, that is a very good question. I mean, NVIDIA and AMD just launched new versions of their top tier graphics cards with eight gigs on the AMD side on board, like eight gigs of RAM. So who are those actually for? Why would one need double the amount of VRAM that was previously offered? We'll have the answer for you right after these messages. And we're back. Before we go any further with this topic, I guess let's start at the beginning. What the heck is VRAM? Well, it's a specialized version of Dynamic Random Access Memory, or DRAM. Similar to the way your normal system RAM keeps the CPU fed with data, the VRAM keeps your GPU, or your graphics processing unit, fed with the information it needs to render images to your monitors. The VRAM holds textures, the frame buffer, um, any other assets that are required to render a frame, like shadow maps, maps and lighting information because it's much faster for the GPU to pull off of that extremely high speed memory right next to it than to pull from your hard drive or SSD or even from your system memory. So then what factors influence the amount of VRAM that's used by your GPU? Well, one is monitor resolution. That's because the frame buffer is used to store the image as it's rendered before and during the time it's being sent to the display. The resolution impacts this directly. So games are all rendered at 32-bit color depth, unless you specifically set them to something else. So that's 32 bits per pixel times 1920 times 1080 for 1080p. So a single frame would be 8.3 megabytes. A 4K image would be a whopping 3840 by 2160 by 32, which is about 33.2 megabytes. Quite a lot more. The second factor that affects memory usage is anti-aliasing. Basically, in order to anti-alias an image or smooth out the jaggies, more pixels need to be rendered and then smoothed to reduce that staircase appearance. As you increase the sample size, as you take more and more samples, this can have a massive impact on memory usage. Okay. So now you know that resolution and anti-aliasing are two major factors that affect VRAM usage, but what are the numbers? Tell me what I need exactly, Linus. Well, here's the tricky thing. It depends completely on your game, foo. Well, the game, you're running, and you're not a fool. You're a very, very intelligent human being. You're 
don't mean to insult you. Obviously, running Minecraft at 4K is going to have very different requirements from something like Skyrim with the high quality texture packs because the actual quality, the resolution of the textures themselves within the game has a huge impact on how much VRAM is going to be used. So here's a bit of an example. When the GTX 680 came out, it only had two gigs of video memory, and that was plenty. But as games have gotten more and more detailed, more VRAM has become required to hold higher quality textures. So games that aren't optimized correctly or just are able to render higher quality images are going to fill up a larger VRAM. So that's why something like the GTX 770, which is actually based on the same GPU as the 680, is available with a 3 gig frame buffer, even though that GPU is not more powerful because the way that the games were being developed had just changed, even in that short period of time. Third, is that more video memory does not necessarily mean better performance mm -hmm. every time. If a game uses, let's say, 1400 megabytes of RAM, adding two more gigs won't make a difference because you won't be using it anyway. On the flip side, not having enough VRAM will degrade performance dramatically. You'll get texture popping, stuttering, and disproportionately low performance. An example of this is I was running Shadow of Mordor by accident on a 4K display with the built-in super sampling option, which means I was running effectively at 8 K. So I was running 200% super sampling. And instead of, you know, dropping in performance by a quarter, it dropped in performance from like 55 FPS to like two because not having enough VRAM is disastrous. And the thing to bear in mind when you're shopping is that GPU vendors use some common sense when they're deciding how much memory to put on a graphics card. So a high-end GPU that can run your games at ultra settings and your high resolutions isn't going to come with 512 mm -hmm. megs of RAM on it. More often than not, it'll have 3 gigs or 4 gigs because the GPU actually has enough horsepower to be able to render the image that would require that much VRAM to store it. The chances are, though, if you're buying a low-end GPU, sort of the opposite is true. There is no point putting three or four gigs mm -hmm. on it because by the time you're going to try to render that image, it's not going to have enough power to do it anyway. So how much VRAM do you need? Well, basically, um, the long and short of it, I guess this is more long than short, is there is no clear-cut answer. Games are constantly evolving. Graphics cards are constantly evolving. Some games are going to need more. Some will need less. I mean, we've seen games that are just highly optimized, or sometimes it's another word for not very demanding. Blizzard games, for example, we've seen ones that are not. So uh, games such as Watch Dogs. So we can't tell you guys exactly what amount will work best. The other thing is modding, like Skyrim, can use anywhere from very, very little to tons if you throw third-party mods at it with like extreme ultra definition textures and stuff like that. So basically, if you want to get the most out of your budget, the best thing to do is talk to people, use assets like the NCIX forums or Linus Tech Tips forums where nice people can help you decide on the specific card for your okay. use case. Today. Let's talk now about finding a specific requirements for a specific application and the only way to do that is in Google. I've got some of the top, whoop, right, I was pointing the right way, some of the top new games for 2023 on the uh, right hand side of this slide. And the only way to find out what the requirements are, what we need for a specific application is to use that and Google the name of the application and the word system requirements. You might want to add PC system requirements because some games work in PS5s and Xbox as well. But let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, do I have this as a link? Oh, heavens to bet. See, I do. So I put God of War system requirements, and the first thing it comes up with is God of War on Steam. I can go ahead and open up that link. It asked me when I was born. I'll just pick a long time ago so that it lets me in because it's um, saying, are you old enough? Because it's a mature game. And then I'm just going to scroll down here to where it says system requirements. And I'm going to zoom in a little so that you can see that a little better. And we'll look at the system requirements. On every game um, and every application in general, it's going to say the minimum and the recommended. The minimum means to install it. 
and to run it at all. Some games will let you install and then not work. Some won't let you install at all if you don't have the minimum requirements. Recommended is saying if you want to play this game with any happiness, you need to have this. So in other words, we want to look at re recommended in general. The questions you'll get on the chapter test will say, what are the minimum or what are the recommended requirements? Now, those are going to be a lot of requirements. For instance, let's look at the recommended right here. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit more. So, oh, that might be too much. So I have to have a 64-bit processor for it to work. Most of the time, we're going to have a 64-bit processor. It has to also have an operating system, Windows 10 64-bit. says the processor has to be this or better. So it has to be an Intel i5 6600K or better. So if we looked at Passmark, it'd be that or higher. Or an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G or better. Memory on the system. This first memory is the system memory. has to have 8 gig of system memory recommended for this game to play. And then we get to what we're talking about today. It has to have an NVIDIA GTX 1060 with 6 gig of RAM or better, or an AMD RX 570 with 4 gig of RAM or better. And it only uses DirectX version 11, which is really surprising because it's supposed to be a new game. So that's the requirements for this one. So I would go there and I would look for the GTX 1060. I just do a, a control find. That's going to be pretty far down on the list. It's ranked 153. Anything I find that's ranked above that pretty much is going to work or should work. And we'll take a look. I'm not going to open just the, the main search because I don't get everything. So I'm going to go ahead and open it over here. I already signed in, so I should be able to just go down and see the system requirements on this one. And there we go. Okay, so on this one, it's saying it has to be a 1078 gig or better, um, which is what I used to have, or an AMD Vega 56, 8 gig or better. This one requires 16 gig of system RAM. And that's where I said, hey, 16 gig is really what we need to have as a gamer, 32 uh, tops, but it's going to it need 16 gig on this one. And we're looking at a 1070 or better. So if I go up here and I do control F and I look for a 1070, there we go, the 1070, that's a 1070 Ti. We were talking about straight line 1070. So wow, it's way down here on the rank of 90, you can't really read it, is that 93? There we go. Looks like 98th on the list with a score of 13,517 or better. Anything above that on the list would work on this particular game with Elden Ring. Let's look at the next one. Yeah, I googled something new. I said, what are the highest uh, video requirements for 2023? Hogwarts Legacy came up as number one with the requirements of an NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti or better, 16 gig of RAM. Um, so the highest one is 18,503 on the recommended requirements. So why do these other ones exist that are twice as good? 39,000 versus we were down here at 18,000. The reason those exist is because this is for a standard setting. It's not trying to do 4K resolution. It's not trying to do 120 uh, hertz on our screen refresh rate. So the higher we put those things, that's what I need and that's what it's recommending and that's the answer to the question that I'm asking you is what are the recommended, what are the minimum uh, video cards or does this meet it? And I need you to know how to find the card that you need to do what you want, but realizing that if it had said this, uh, that's $480, I know from looking earlier that, let's see, what's, $480, I can go oh. it all the way up to this Radeon card right here for $480. I can't go any, nope, can't go any higher for $480. Um, I can get the 2080 Ti, wow, that's expensive. No, I can't. That looks like the highest one at 22,000 I can get for the same price. My point is you find out what you need and then find out something better than that on the list if you were actually going to buy something that's less expensive. So if I can get something here for 480 versus buying this one for 480, yeah, it said, I said I want this one, but I'm realistically gonna go as high as I can on the Passmark list 
with the same amount of money. That way I know, or I might be able to even get one less. So if I'm looking down here and it says, can I find anything less than $480? It's gonna meet it. This one's gonna meet it. And that one was our, um, I believe that was the one that was also our best value at $399. And this one being uh, my highest value card, that's probably what I would get in this situation. Uh, if it's actually available, let's see if it's actually available for $399. And the answer is no, it's 429, but that's still a good buy. And I love gigabyte. So uh, I would probably go with that option. So that's how we find uh, for specific applications. We Google that with the word systems requiring, required on it. And then I go to the website and I look at those specs. Uh, I don't look at minimum ever unless it's something I just want to know whether I can play it with the card I have now. In which case, I might look at this and say, you know, I really want this God of War game. What video card do, do will I at least hit the minimum requirements? It's a GTX 960. In which case, which case I go here to the D GTX 960. I find that and I say, hey, this is number 261. I know I need over 6,027 ranking or up in order to at least install it. So would my system, would I be able to install it with my system? The, for instance, did I, I, I might want to know, can I play this on the club machines? And they have the GeForce uh, 1050 Ti's on them with the 6,296 rating. Um, would I be able to install it? Yes. I would be able to install it. I would be able to play it, but it's not the recommended uh, video card um, for this application. So that's pretty much it. I, I just go and look at those. I see what the minimum is, i.e. if I have this card, could I install it and play it? Or the recommended, i.e. I want to go buy a card. That's what I would, I never buy the minimum. I would always buy the recommended if I was trying to get something for a specific application. But can I at least install it and play it? That's the other question. We know that looking up the chart is better card. So anything above what we found, in this case, this was saying, hey, GTX 1060. So anything from the GTX 1060 up would meet my recommended requirements for that one. Again, I just Google the application and the word system requirements. I'm going to finish today with a kind of summary video that is also linked on the website for us to watch that kind of brings all this stuff together, looking at all the specifications, all the requirements and everything on, on uh, video cards. We're going to look at that video next. If you want to buy a brand new graphics card in 2023, you're in the right place because in this video we're going to explain absolutely everything GPU and help you to find the dream graphics card for your next rig. We'll be explaining what a graphics card is and does, what the best ones look like, and ultimately show you all of the benchmarks at loads of different resolutions, including price per frame, so you can see exactly which cards offer the best bang for your buck. So let's find you the perfect graphics card after a short word from this video's sponsor. MSI's Optics Gaming Monitors are here to take your gaming to the next level. The MPG 32 1UR QD packs 4K resolution, 144Hz refresh rate and HDR technology all inside a gorgeous 32 inch form factor. It is perfect for both PC gaming and next gen consoles as the monitor supports DisplayPort as well as HDMI 2.1 along with variable refresh rate tech which is fully rated as G-Sync compatible. Learn more today with the link below. Let's start off with the current climate. What on earth is going on with graphics cards in 2023? Well, it's good and bad things too. The good news is that Nvidia, AMD, and now even Intel are actually in a three-way fight to offer you the best performing graphics cards at a given price. The bad news is that all of these are still fixed artificially high, and it's only really Intel that's actually doing anything to bring these prices back down to earth. And I guess you could say that the question is, how much is a graphics card actually worth? Well, obviously you have the cost of materials, manufacturing, marketing, but actually the real answer is that it's worth whatever anyone is willing to pay for it. And of course, graphics cards are always going to be invaluable to gamers as they directly determine a game's frames per second, which then in turn controls exactly how smooth the game is and how high you can crank up the settings. More powerful cards also let you enable next generation features with the graphics processing unit, or GPU for short, consisting of dedicated hardware for real-time ray tracing, artificial intelligence, video encoding and decoding, as well as acceleration for creating 
native apps like video editing or maybe some 3D modeling. And you probably already noticed that graphics cards are almost branded twice. You've got Nvidia, Intel, and AMD that actually make that GPU itself, and then that's sent over to a manufacturer, so take someone like PowerColor for instance, they'll actually then put together their own graphics card, and this is what you'll buy in the shops. So you're almost buying from two separate companies at once. When shopping for a graphics card, the number one thing to always do is to look at some benchmark graphs. And I know they look boring, it's Excel, you got away from this in school, right? But good old benchmarkers actually makes them as interesting as possible, and they will tell you exactly how a card will perform in the games of your choice. However, there is a small caveat here, as the CPU, or the processor, will also need to be high-end enough to actually keep up with your graphics card and let the GPU stretch its legs. And if you are feeling a little bit unsure about this and you want to learn more about gaming CPUs, I've already made a video going through the best ones and explaining everything in much greater detail. You can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. Gaming benchmarks aside, it is also wise to pay attention to the specifications of the card, in particular the amount and speed of video memory. Now, video memory, or VRAM for short, allows for high resolution gaming and stores textures for the games to display the 3D worlds in great detail. As a general rule of thumb, 6GB or more is great for 1080p, 8GB for 1440, and 10 or more for 4K. But it is entirely game dependent, so please take these words with a fair old watch of salt. And then now, for the single most important piece of advice I'll ever give to you, the PC gamer, and it's actually to buy your graphics card based on your needs, not anybody else's. Advice is very personal, so if you listen to other people, it's usually skewed towards their needs, but obviously what you want to use your graphics card for is gonna be unique to you, so don't go listening to me. Don't go listening to Steve. Don't go listening to Quentin down the bottom of the comments. I'm watching you, Quentin. Ask yourself three simple questions and the card of your dreams will magically present itself to you in spectacular fashion. Number one, what games will you actually be playing? Something like CSGO, Dota or Valorant really isn't going to need too much of a beastly GPU to get your sky high frame rates, while Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing on Ultra is going to need the latest and greatest. Number two, what screen are you actually going to be playing it on? And this is almost a question inside a question. We're two for two, as this splits into both resolution and refresh rate. 1080p is just so much easier to run games at than 1440p, which of course is in turn easier to run than 4K. And it's exactly the same thing for refresh rate. If you want to feel a properly smoother game, then you're going to want to find yourself a monitor or TV that refreshes at 120 hertz or higher. This means that 120 images are shown on screen in a single second, which gives us more reaction time and an improved level of fluidity. And both of these things almost come together and compound. So if you want a higher resolution and a higher refresh rate, then proportionally it's much harder to achieve and much more expensive to achieve than playing at 1080p 60 hertz. What's more important to you? Image quality, speed, or both? Finally, we come to number three. What's your budget? We'd all love to have an RTX 4090 in our machines, but 1800 quid on a graphics card is probably just a little bit too much for most to spend. So, once you properly understand how much you can or want to spend, you can actually find a graphics card that fits within that. And for most people watching, that should actually be enough to go out and find the graphics card that is right for you. But of course, there are a few extra things to consider if you want to get a bit more technical. Ray tracing is a widely debated topic, as it's essentially the key to environments looking truly realistic. But it's just so demanding that the FPS cost usually means that it is reserved for the most expensive GPUs. So if you're serious about getting hold of this tech, I would strongly advise looking at some ray tracing benchmarks before you buy anything. Also, display outputs. Often overlooked, but different cards have different ports. And this can be a right pain in the bum if you're running multiple monitor setups, or you just have a really high-end display. For example, a lot of new TVs are actually capable of running 4K at 120Hz, but only over HDMI 2.1 one. So you need to factor this in whenever you're making a purchase. What about size and thermal performance? What case are you going to be putting it in? And how loud a graphics card can you actually tolerate? Physically larger cards are usually quieter with lower temperatures and can overclock a bit more, but they're more expensive, often to the point of actually representing terrible value for money. More expensive GPUs also consume more power, which not only requires a larger case, cooler and price tag, but also a beefier power supply. If you're unsure, check online to see the requirements for your card of choice. And then of course, the biggest question of all, NVIDIA or AMD? Or Intel Arc? 
The truth is that both Nvidia and AMD are brilliant at delivering stable drivers and support software. Though in my opinion, AMD's is arguably slightly easier to use, but Nvidia seems to nail timings for game ready drivers with every single big game launch. You can't really go wrong with either, unless you choose Intel, as at the time of filming, Arc is still a little bit undercooked and it can be quite frustrating to use. It is certainly usable, don't get me wrong, it's just a bit buggy and unpolished. You can see my full video about this in the top right corner of your screen if you're interested. Interested. But I know, I know, I don't want to hear all the talk mate, I just want to see the benchmarks, too much talk. Yeah. Firstly, that's very rude mate, so have some manners. Secondly, you want benchmarks, let's give you benchmarks. And recommendations, because I'm a nice guy. Let's do us all a favour and start as cheaply as possible, and for better or for worse, you're pretty much looking at used cards here. You used to be able to buy brand new ones for 100 quid, but those days, or at least those days of decent ones, have long since passed. So if you're looking to bag yourself a little bit of a bargain, then something like a GTX 1070 or RX 5700 XT on the used market at the time of filming seems to be a pretty good bet. Looking at brand new cards though, that come with full warranties, and it's actually a slam dunk win for a AMD. Almost all of these are insane value for money versus Nvidia. We would recommend the RX 6600 and the RX 6600 XT as our go-to cards, but we would avoid the 6500 as the performance can be almost as much as half of a proper 6600, and there isn't actually a baked-in encoder for sharing gameplay. For 1440p, Intel Arc A750 actually starts to show some decent FPS values, and surprisingly, it's not actually a terrible shout if you play Apex Legends. It also has support for somewhat usable ray tracing, and AV1 video and code, but whether it's worth the potential software bugs is obviously entirely up to you. As for the Team Green Nvidia cards, well they are absolutely worth considering. The RTX 3060 Ti for instance is still my favourite all-end graphics card over the last few years, but the problem is that they just haven't been dropping in price like they should have been, and as a result it's only really worth grabbing if you can get yourself a decent discount, or if you really value DLSS and ray tracing above pure cost per frame. For 1440p high refresh rate gaming, it's a win for the AMD RX 6700 XT right now. It topped our average FPS testing at both high and ultra settings, and actually costs about 10% less to buy than Team Green at the time of filming. To be clear though, ray tracing is absolutely not the strength of this GPU, so if you do want to use this feature in games like Cyberpunk, then you're going to have to cough up the cash and go for Team Green with something like a 3060 Ti, or maybe even a 3070. Let's move on now to what I would describe as high-end gaming. 4K at over 60 FPS. And the first thing I want to show you is the same cost per frame graph, but now with the high-end GPUs, as this perfectly illustrates two things. That having higher quality settings puts the cost of gaming up considerably, and secondly, that high-end GPUs are terrible value. I know we're at PC Gaming Channel, but if you want the absolute best bang for your buck, then an Xbox Series X is so much cheaper for 4K gaming, it is crazy, as every true 4K capable graphics card alone costs more than Microsoft's 4K60 machine. Putting that, and hopefully your pitchforks aside for a second however, you're essentially looking at an RX 6800 XT or an RTX 3080 to get into true, no compromise 4K max settings territory. Each of these cards meets my checklist of having above 10 gigabytes of video memory, supporting hardware accelerated ray tracing, and being fast enough to target a minimum of 60 FPS, albeit with the use of FSR or DLSS. It's likely that the RTX 4070 and the 7800 XT are going to be fast enough to game at 4K comfortably too, so when those launch, consider them, assuming they both have 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Unfortunately, if you want to turn on ray tracing and play at 4K, or maybe you're aiming for 4K 120 in the most demanding titles, then you are going to have to spend closer to an eye-watering $1,000 or pound mark. Ouch. For me, Personally, despite the controversy, the RTX 4070 Ti is actually a decent option for top spec 4K gaming, as despite the slower memory, it still offers an average of 104 FPS at UHD, and its street price is much lower than that of the 7900 XT and the XTX. Plus, it supports Nvidia's DLSS frame generation that can, and will, allow you to play ray trace games at significantly higher FPS. That being said, if you can get a 7900 XTX for £1,000, then clearly that is a much more 
powerful card, with more memory, DisplayPort 2.1, and a frame gen feature that is coming soon. So that would be my pick if the RRP rang true. As for the RTX 4080, well, this isn't actually a card that I'd recommend to most people, as its price puts its value far behind the 7900 XTX, with only its greater ray tracing and DLSS performance making it worthy of consideration. But it's 1200 pounds! 1200! Is it really that much better than the 4070 Ti? In the real world, probably not. But of course that leaves us with one more option. For those that want literally everything and to heck with the price, the RTX 4090 is clearly going to be your way to go. It makes zero sense for value for money, but you can't fault its performance. It will crush anything and everything, even 4K ray tracing max settings. In fact, it's so powerful that you need a latest spec Intel 13900K or Ryzen 7000 X3D chip to properly keep up with this thing, or you are going to be bottlenecked, even at 4K. But hey, you can't argue with the results. With this, the latest games look and run their absolute best. So there you go, pretty much everything you need to know about graphics cards in 2023. Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are you gonna consider picking up? Which ones are trash? Let me know down in the comment section. Below. Okay, in order to see the quiz, if you didn't already do the pop-up skirmish, you need to do that. It's one question just to make sure you understand the purpose of all this. And then we should be going into choosing a video card based on the application. We've already gone through the lesson. You've already done the chapter book. You can take the quiz now and we will do the review and move on with monitors in the next class.